All right, so just to uh, just to start with, I am running two iPads. I'm running uh, one iPad that is actually watch this. If I come down here and I drag this, I can drag that back onto the screen. You can barely see it, but it's back on the main screen. Well, you can see it here. It's just on the main screen. If I drag it back down here, you can see it's now in on this iPad, and I just maximize it. So again, it's just that pop-out window of the GNS 530 on an iPad. So, um, and then as you can see here, and I'll talk about how I I'll talk about the technology that I go about doing that. But over here on the other iPad, as you can see over here, we're running all of the instruments that you see here in the sim. So for example, if I change, if I rotate my finger on the heading bug, you can see that by me twirling, I am changing the heading bug in the sim. How cool is that? I also have complete control over the autopilot, and I have control over the altimeter, and I have a lot of functionality. So, what I've done is I've captured I've captured the instruments with air server and then I'm going to overlay them as you can see here on the bottom of the stream. Now what that's going to allow me to do is I'm going to be able to go full screen when I'm flying around, right? And you're still going to be able to see the instruments on the screen. So it's kind of cool. Now you'll have to forgive me, I'll probably be repetitive as other people come into the stream tonight that uh, I'll be explaining how I do this and what I can do with these iPads because it's early. So I, 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 pro I apologize already for the, uh, the repetition. Trixmont, hello. Bear Bass, hello. Bucky McMuffy, Layton, hello. Uh, are on the on screen supposed to be synced with? Yes, they are synced with it. Well, they're supposed to be. They should be. Yeah, they are, aren't they? Hold on. Maybe they're not. Let me double check. Just one second. The air server may have gone off here. Let's try it. Let's see here. Okay, where's the heading bug? Uh, there's the heading bug. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not synced up. So let me, uh, let me redo this. Let's see if that helps. All right, I think that's, let's see if they're synced up now. Oops. We're on 30. Yeah, so what it was is if you minimize, if you minimize air server, it's not gonna work, but this should be synced up. So now my he heading bug is is zero is a uh, 240 degrees is that working okay we'll do we'll do a lot of testing so basically i just learned that you cannot minimize air server or it kind of goes into a uh kind of goes into a um a funk for lack of a better word so yeah there you go edward lang hello um so yeah, we're just gonna take off. We'll do we'll do a little bit of work with um, the uh, Skyhawk. We'll test the the GNS five thirty, um, and we'll go we'll do that. So just to tell you guys what I'm doing over here. So again, um, on the on the the GNS uh, five thirty, um, again, it's, all, all this all this iPad is down here. Is Windows, and I am using someone guessed it. I think Bucky Buffy McMuffy Duet. This is Duet Display. So Duet Display is a piece of software 
that basically turns your iPad into another monitor for your Windows. And then of course I'm just popping out the GNS 530 and this is connected to my computer via a USB cable and I just maximize it. So it's connected to my computer via USB and again I'm using Duet Display for that. And things work. Like for example, if I click on Direct2, it works. If I click on Flight Plan, it works. If I click on CDI, it changes the CDI. If I click on Procedures, it selects the procedures. So you get the idea. If I go to Flight Plan and then I go to Menu, that works. Now the tricky part, the tricky part is when, let me just catch up with chat here. Yeah, exactly. Who needs, in fact, the idea here is to try to fly without a mouse. Try to fly without a mouse, and for the most part, I can do it. Um, is it a frame rate hit? I think if you're running, I think if you're running, um, I don't see a frame rate hit right now, but I have a pretty high-end PC, so I don't know how well it'll work. Will it work over Wi-Fi? I don't think the Duet display will work over Wi-Fi, but this over here, running the instruments, does work over Wi-Fi, because that's all I'm on right now. I'm just on Wi-Fi. So those instruments are synced by the local network. Um, okay, so just to, just let me talk briefly about how I get around some of the uh, nuances with this. So this scroll wheel down here doesn't work very well. For example, if I go to uh, Flight Plan, um, I want to clear this out. If I go to Flight Plan um, and I just want to use this scroll wheel, it doesn't really work. Okay, right there it worked, but I got lucky and I can't really scroll very easily. It's not very friendly. Now there are some tricks and tips around this uh, using, um, well there's a new thing called Air Manager 3.0 that's in beta that's gonna allow you to put a, a template overlay over this and then it'll have a lot more touch functionality with that scroll wheel. There's a video on there by a guy named Russ. Is it Russ? I think it's Russ something. There is a CPU hit on the Mac version. Okay, yeah. Hello, my Epic Matt. Okay, so let me tell you what. Let me show you what I did to overcome that. Right. So, let's say I want to go direct to. And I want to get come up here to the field where it says KCHA, and I want to change that. I'm going to take this camera. This is a mobile cam today. So I'm going to take this over here, and you see my Thrustmaster. Warthog, I have programmed this switch right here to control, to act as if it's that scroll knob, that knob, the inner and the outer knob on the GNS 530. So I'm going to just press this up right now. I'll press it up right now. Boop. And over here on the Garmin, I now have a blank field. Now watch this. If I press it up again, I have a K. So again, I'm just all I'm using is the is the Thrustmaster joystick. Now I'm going to scroll to the side and it's going to move the cursor. Or sorry, it's going to change the letter. So back and forth. So again, I'll come over here. Sorry about the the craziness. So so right there I'm changing the letter going back and forth with my toggle with my hat switch here on the side. Now let's say I just go hit, I scroll down, I press down, and then I can go to K, and I can put in here K, T, Y, S. Okay, and then watch this. So instead of Instead of hitting, I could hit the enter button. I could just go enter, and that'll work. But I've also programmed it, so when I press the trigger, 
it also does the enter. So if I can walk over here and I hit enter, enter, boom. Now I've activated it. Now I could, uh, I could just hit enter there as well. So as you can see, the touch functionality is nice. The only thing lacking right now is that scroll wheel is a little bit finicky. Okay, so let's just talk briefly about, you know you could use the SciTech radio panels for that. I would love to use the SciTech radio panels for that, but I don't know how, and I'll tell you why. So, we'll, okay, so we won't quite go on to the instrument panel yet. If I, Todoriko, if I look at, uh, I'll show you. I, I, I use, are, well, okay, let me, let me back up. Are you saying on using XSciTech panels, or are you saying use I can use SPAD.next, or are you talking natively with just the SciTech drivers? Hit you up later? Okay, I'll do that. Because I tried to get the knob on the radio panel uh, to work, and it didn't. XSciTech panels? Okay. I would love to have a session uh, with you and, and how to do that. That would be awesome. Right now I'm using SPAD.next. Okay, let's talk about let's talk about the uh, the air server for a moment here. So I'll just bring up the um, let's see that'll work I think. All right, so we can take the four flight image off the screen for the moment. So this is what's being displayed on the iPad, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll, and I, now it's um, got the, the menu, right? So I can add things, and I can take things away. So let's just start with a, uh, we'll just start with a blank canvas. So if I come over here and I go boom, and I go, oh, I want a blank canvas. I'm going to say, okay, um, oops, drag it over. Uh, I, I'm just going to search for stuff that's related to the 172, right? So the Skyhawk 172. Yeah, I'm going to need an airspeed indicator. So there you go. I've tapped on the airspeed indicator. This is all on my iPad. Now I can change that to whatever size I want it to be. And I can move it around on the panel, right? Once I put it lock it let's let's say i move it to that 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 area and then i hide the menu boom now that's my that's my airspeed indicator right i can have a heading indicator on there i can have a vertical speed indicator i can have a tachometer um you know you, you name it you get the idea vor ils right and then i well, you can attach these together so it's very, very fresh, very modular. It's a little bit finicky with sizing, but once you get the sizing correct, then you can attach them and play with it, play around with it. But you guys get the idea. Look up Desktop Aviation. They have a nav com control panel switches only, and it works with X Panel 11. I looked up Desktop Aviation. Go look at it. Like everything's out of stock. Nothing's available really sucks because I wanted to get some stuff from him um, anyway you get the idea so I I've gone ahead and I've built this panel right I added the little autopilot so down here you've got the autopilot so I can use the I can use the touch screen to turn off and on the autopilot change into heading mode nav mode I can turn go into vertical speed mode I can hit altitude to hold my altitude etc so it's very, very, very functional with what you can do. And this is called Air Manager. So Air Manager, um, it's by a company called Sim uh, Innovations. And if you're watching the, uh, if you're watching the, the live stream, um, I'll just briefly bring up the, oops, wrong keyboard.
So sim siminnovations.com. I'll put it in the chat room. I'll also leave it in the in the description below on the YouTube video. There it is. So it's kind of cool. So again, hide the menu, bring that up. Now we can switch back to our cockpit view. And there, and I've cut just some of the, the panels to be displayed on the screen. Yes, there there is a desktop version, but the desktop version is two version two point something, and I guess three point something is coming. It's in beta right now. I'm hoping to get my hands on the beta, to be honest. All right, let's do a flight, and we'll just test the instrumentation. We'll test the uh, the GPS. So I'm going to go up here. And I'm going to hit uh, uh, flight plan. I'm going to hit menu. And I'm going to use my Thrustmaster. And I'm going to select the delete approach, enter, and that's fine. Or delete flight plan, that's fine. Okay, let's go ahead and get her going here. Uh, all right, so I'm going to use my instrumentation down here. Um, I'm going to bring up the cockpit just for a moment. I do have a switch panel, but there's so many, there's so many uh, things going on here that I don't have, I gotta situate it so the switch panel is easily accessible. All right, we'll also lean for taxi. And as you can see, the EGT is gonna rise or fall. That's so cool. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. You probably don't like those fast taxis either, either. Let's see. Let's go. Yeah, we're in expedited mode, so we'll just go over here and take off short field. From Lithuania with love. Hello. All right. Okay, there's not enough runway for a takeoff there, but there is enough that way. All right, intersection departure. I just, I just really want to test this uh, autopilot and also the AP. Chuckle Hut, hello. Did I just swear? I don't think I s swore. I typically don't. Okay, so we'll just come down here and we'll put in landing lights, nav lights, strobe lights, uh, taxi light off, no flaps take off, and we'll go full screen. Go full mixture. I might have taken a 90 degree taxiway at 25 knots in a DA40 before. <laughs> okay, there's 60 and a five. Small rotation. Okay, hopefully we don't have another crash. DMB bird, how, how, how's it going? Okay, so everything's still working. Yeah, everything's coordinated. Okay. All right, let's try this one more time. Well, let me trim up the aircraft here first. Hold on. Okay, aircraft getting trim. And, okay, I'm going to hit on the iPad. I'm going to hit, well, I'll sync up my heading bug first. All right, I'm going to hit autopilot. I'm then going to hit heading mode, right? So now we're in heading mode. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to test the iPad to change my heading mode. So I'm going to, uh, you guys saw it earlier, I'm just going to rotate this knob here. As you can see, I'm just twisting on the iPad and it is changing our heading. So we'll fly 270 degrees west. Hello, Taco. Uh, the other thing we're going to do is I'm going to click on uh, VS. We're now in VS mode. I'll reach over here to my SciTech panel and I'm just going to go into 400 feet per minute. I'm also going to change the time of day here. Just got fiber internet TV installed. 1000 megabits. Wow. Nice. Very, very nice. Okay, so now we've got heading mode. 
and again I can just scroll the wheel on on the iPad and I can go heading 210 how cool is that okay let's test the GPS a little bit so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say okay I wanna go direct to I wanna clear this out so I'm gonna reach over here to my Thrustmaster and I've programmed that hat switch to go through the letters so I'm doing this all with well I'll go K KTYS again this is all being done I'm gonna hit the fire button fire button again now we're direct so now, now I'm gonna come down here TMA pilot yes a lot of lurking how you doing bud good to see you again we gotta do PUBG again soon um, all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change I'm gonna hit the uh, I'm gonna hit the iPad here I'm gonna change my CDI to G GPS okay so now that's switched to GPS and then I'm gonna come over here to the autopilot and I'm gonna hit nav so once I hit that nav button my plane is now going to follow the GPS pl plan so I'll go ahead and I'll zoom out here there is the new plan to go to from uh, KCHA to KTYS nice to see the plug-in thingy that's halfway affordable yeah it's not too bad it's it, aviation 2015 is pretty cool isn't it all right so now we're on a GPS path you can see here it shows the distance it's showing 77 miles to our destination all right I'm gonna go ahead and come back over here to the iPad and I'm gonna hit alt and we're gonna hold altitude at or altitude at 3000 all right so how cool is that you can change your altimeter so I can I can I can rotate the altimeter dial on the iPad and it'll change the altimeter in this in the sim the thing about the the autopilots is they tend to go back to the magenta line so once I get here I'm gonna go ahead and do direct and I'm gonna uh, activate it for a little more direct because it's gonna go back to the magenta line at when I activated that direct to and I'll go back here to flight plan so being able to use no mouse just all touch screen and then using the Thrustmaster for the scroll wheel inner and outer knob it's really cool thank you for the good night from Lithuania have a, a good sleep when I added another monitor in my system and moved the Garmin to the other screen my frames dropped in half oh yeah, what kind of video card do you have maybe it's time for a, a little beefier card I don't know chaos dispenser hello what is that icon what's that icon oh it's twitchcon you're registered for twitchcon is that what that icon is ah okay that's cool how you doing chaos the GNS does calculate a turn portion if you hit direct to but it assumes you immediately go into nav mode if you delay then of course it will it will try to intercept the original track there you go. Uh, the tests are going very well. Uh, we did have an X-Plane crash, but that's okay. Uh, I'm going to go back into heading mode. So we'll sync up our heading bug. I've, I've made a joystick. You guys can see on the screen here that I'm in the red line with regard to RPM. So I'm going to bring back my throttle. It's going to change the RPM. I'm then going to lean. Is EGT on the screen? I think it is. So I'm going to lean until my EGT peaks and starts to drop. Uh, you can rotate the peak dial to so get it out of the way. Okay, there's the peak. Boy, that really changes that fuel flow. That simple fixed prop pick, yeah, RPM increases with speed. Yep. All right, we'll come back to 2,500 RPM. Moneyball24, how are you doing? Uh, I'm flying. Uh, right now we're just doing some testing, but we'll eventually end up at KTYS. 
uh, KTYS, which is Tyson McGee, I believe. All right, let's go into heading mode. So there's heading mode. So again, we're gonna we're gonna rotate the the dial. We'll sync our heading bug. We're gonna rotate the dial with the iPad until we get to zero three zero. And all I'm doing is here, as you can see, is I'm using the iPad to change my heading. Manually updating the Eric now since the FMS data manager won't see X.11. Yeah, it's a little bit tricky. Actually, I did get the FMS data manager from Navigraph to, to recognize X.11, but it, it, it took a little bit. Yes, I, I, left, I left out of, uh, out of CHA. So yeah, we're going from level field um, in Chattanooga uh, up to Tyson McGee, which is uh, in Knoxville. And they actually call it Knoxville Tower. That's interesting. Not McGee Tower. Or Tyson McGee. Changing heading looks like milking a mouth. Yeah, exactly. How you doing, Josh? So again, I'm rotating back to the east. Sometimes you have to be a little slow with the milking. Can we pick up some barbecue? You bet. Some brisket. Do you want it chopped or sliced brisket? Are you still using Zebo 3. Point? I am not using I. I am using P. 3.06 P as in Papa because it works with my hardware uh, MCP panel. Hello Al. All right, so we'll go back to nav mode now. So I'm going to click on nav, and there's the nav, and then it's going to get me going back to to Knoxville, Tennessee, 67 miles away. How cool is that? Sliced? Okay, you got it. Chaos wants chopped. All right, we're getting both. All right, let's go back into vertical speed mode. So I'm going to click vertical speed mode here on the autopilot panel. And then I'm going to then use my panel, my hardware panel, to change up to 500 feet per minute. So the instrumentation should show 500 feet per minute. G-Hub wants some ribs. Okay, we're getting ribs. We might as well get some pulled pork. Any other? Does someone want burnt ends? That is the question. So if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to come join us live. We have virtual barbecues live on twitch.tv slash johnfly j-o-n-f-l-y I, I, I'm not a big fan of burnt ends but give me a, some sausage links some brisket some pulled pork some ribs I'm, I'm happy but I, I, I don't know maybe I, need, maybe I just haven't had a good a, a well prepared burnt end I don't know Well, that was a little bit slow with the with the panning. So, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch between um, the the no panel mode and the um, like you know the front facing panel, and then every once in a while I'm going to go no panel. And in this case, I'm going to come back out of uh, I'm going to go actually down. We'll go down in vertical speed now. So I'm going to rotate the dial. And we're going to go down 400 feet per minute for a little bit. I just like the fact that you can see a little bit more of the scenery. Did the autopilot just turn off? It did. I accidentally hit flight director. Can we make sure part of the brisket is wet? Uh, I, I don't know what that means, but yes. <laughs> a Zebo mod for the 172. <laughs> Odd bod. How did you get the 430 onto the iPad? Uh, Oddbod, so um, the, the 530, you can take the 530 or the, or the 430. And how you, 
it's basically a, 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 a it's an iPad but watch so if I just take this I'm just popping this out this is a Windows and I'm just gonna drag this back to the main sim as you can see it's just the pop out window and I'm dragging it down to the iPad and then I'm down once it's down on the iPad I'm maximizing it and so um, and then it's using a software package called uh, Duet Display. So Duet Display is uh, it's payware. It's not very expensive. And then to get the uh, instrumentation over here on the other iPod pad, it is um, called uh, Air Manager. So yeah, play X Plane on the iPad. There you go. I do own that. I just haven't played around with it too much. It's the fatty side that makes the brisket extra juicy and tasty. Okay, I did not know that. I'm going to change my verticals. Well, I'll hit the altitude button. So we'll go ahead and capture at 3,400, give or take. Drag the window to the iPad. There you go. Oh, I could drag the entire... Yeah, you're, you're, you're right. I could... Okay, this might kill us, but let's try it. But it's Bucky's fault if we crash. Uh, no, it won't work because the resolution, the resolution down here, let's find out what the resolution is. Um, if I right click and I go to display settings, that third monitor is um, tw uh, 1024 by 768, right? So 1024 by 768, it won't, it won't be friendly with X-Plane right now. <laughs> I almost bit. So you'd be able to drag, uh, able to drag the Reality XP GTN 750 onto it as, on the iPad as well. I you I would think so. Yeah, I would think you could. Um, and then of course you'd want to put the iPad into uh, portrait instead of instead of landscape. But I I haven't tried that. I should try that because I own the GTN 750. Uh, I do have the Flight One GTN that works on the iPad natively. That's pretty cool stuff as well. But I have had a, I've had a few conflicts with some planes. The Four Flight still working well with the new stuff. Uh, the Four Flight does work well with all of the new stuff. The only issue is is having an extra iPad for Four Flight. <laughs> so here I was thinking, okay, maybe I need to get uh, another iPad. <laughs> A cheap one. I was I was researching this today. You can get a, an old iPad uh, Air 16 gig Wi-Fi for 150, 200 bucks, maybe 240, brand new. Um, and so I was thinking that I could have that for for four flight, and then these for uh, for this this type of stuff. So, but I do have a couple of things coming in the mail. I have uh, I for 35 dollars I bought a five inch screen uh, that's designed for um, Raspberry Pi uh, Blackberry uh, Raspberry Pi uh, units it's a five inch screen HDMI and so and I've got an enclosure coming so the idea is that I'll be able to take the G um, I'll be able to free up this iPad and use the HDMI five inch screen uh, instead of the iPad, and then I could bring up more instrumentation using uh, Air Manager if I wanted to. A lot of options. A thousand iPads, exactly. But the GTN 750 still uses a spinning knob, right? I mean, the touch interface in it might be able to substitute most functions. Yes. Yeah. I really would like to find the uh, command for that SciTech panel, but I haven't used SciTech panels for a long time, so. We should listen to Miley Cyrus in flight. No, because then it'll get clipped. But with that in mind, we need to, we need to, uh, what do we got, 56 miles to go? Um, all right, first person to do this can wager Let's have someone flip a coin. So just type in uh, exclamation heads and the amount or exclamation tells and the amount of snacks that you want to wager. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Need to buy a couple of spinning knobs. Yes. Yeah, JSnap. Um, yeah, Total Ritco hooked me up today with so many uh, good sites to go spend tons of money on knobs and switches and 
the thing that I'm most impressed with is that um, oh I got to enable it hold on let me enable that command uh, the most thing the, the thing I'm most impressed with is that USB board all right here we go hold on okay now the coin flip is enabled heads or tails and the amount of snacks that you want to wager let's see what happens 54 miles to go yeah the Leo Bodnor Bodner board is, is really cool yes the GNS is on the iPad yep pad dog that's funny it said you can only flip a max of a hundred snacks but yet you designated a hundred snacks huh Freeze lost, Peter lost, and Moneyball lost. Oh, three. Uh, does someone want to try tails? Actually, I think if someone tries heads, they might win right now. But <laughs> Oh, it's time for a sippy sip. Oh, one person can only run it every, what is that, uh, two minutes? No, it's four minutes. <laughs> All right, so we're back on pass. So we can use the touch screen to change the range. So I can zoom in. Um, I'm also going to choose, we're 52 miles away. But I'll go ahead and choose procedure and I'll select approach and I'm going to use my Thrustmaster hat switch to scroll through here. I guess we'll do ILS 23 left. Sure, why not? So ILS 23 left, I'll hit enter and I'm going to not want to go on vectors. I want to go to good all and then I can Oops. Let's try that again. Procedures. Procedures. Select approach. ILS 23 right. And I'm going to go by a nailin. I want to activate. There we go. Now we're going to head to the approach end for ILS 23 right. Doesn't your 747 nav panel you got a chance to hit, change the heading? 747 nav panel. Uh, I'm not sure I follow you. Minnesota running back Cook is out for the season. Oh, that is bad. It's amazing how all of these instruments that you guys are seeing on the screen are all synchronized over Wi-Fi with X-Plane. What an amazing piece of tech. Oh, the new panel. I got an MCP panel. Uh, the MCP panel, uh, it probably works mostly with the 747. Yeah. I wouldn't use the iPad though. That's that would be using hardware. All right, coin flip worked. Let's try disable the coin flip. Actually, we'll just leave the coin flip enabled. And uh, okay, um, still is open as of now. Steel is open. So you can type in exclamation steel by itself or you can type exclamation steel space and you can designate a certain person. <laughs> but you may you may lose. 
how much is the app? Um, so the app for the Duet display, how much was that? Was that like 20? I think it was like 20 bucks. I think it was 20 bucks for the app, the Duet display for the, for the um, from the App Store. The software is free for your PC, and then it's 20 bucks for the iPad, I, if I recall correctly. Maybe someone can confirm that for me. But yeah, it's a, essentially, this is an, oh, the Air Manager, this is the iPad version, JT Kerr. This is the iPad version of Air Manager, right? So um, it, the desktop version, I'm waiting for uh, version 3.0 before, uh, before I do that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and go direct airport. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to change this. Okay. I'm going to scroll. I'm using my joystick to do this. T. Y. S. Activate. Boom. Now we're going to go direct airport. You've been eyeballing this one for a few months now? Yes, I just barely discovered it. I, I didn't know about it. And I'm glad that I waited because apparently there's been some pain along the way. And now that 11, you know, X-Plane 11 is in a very stable release, I think that there can be some solid uh, features that are added. And I, I'm really excited for version 3.0 on the desktop because uh, I, can, I can really envision um, a home cockpit now. That's not extremely complicated um, so I can see me building the Cessna cockpit and using nothing but SciTech switch panels radio panels and iPads and I'll have everything with no mouse no mouse except to run I guess X-Plane I have the rotary, no rotary knobs from desktop aviation four knobs and when I set it up in X Plane 11, it works both GA planes and the Zebo. Very nice. The uh, the rotary the rotary knobs that I'm looking at are from uh, Leo Bednar. Let me grab them for you. They're so cool. And again, this is Todoriko hooked me up today with um, some links. That, that well, the first link. This is this is the coolest thing on the planet. So uh, I guess some people use Arduino um, for their interfacing their home cockpits, and I, I guess you just don't need to. So this this um, this button box. Uh, this BBI 32 button box interface this right here is all you need and from what Todoriko was telling me is that this will be seen as a USB device in X-Plane and so you'll be able to run leads and so the, the, the idea is to run leads out to your knobs and your switches right so so what I'm gonna do is um, there is a, these are buttons, encoders, and switches. Uh, there's a, where's the rotary one? Rotary encoders right here. So rotary encoders, this one right here. Dual concentric rotary encoder with push button. So this bad boy, which is not cheap, it's 20 pounds. That's a lot of dollars. But this thing has the push button, the rotary, the inner, the outer knob, and then look at this. You can get the black or the gray knob set, right? And that's just five pounds for the knob set, right? So between that board and that rotary encoder, you could, it'd be where you're well on your way to having a hardware switch for for that scroll wheel. So yeah, I'm thinking I might start playing around with some of that stuff. That's why I'm thinking your MCP will work. 
Uh, that would be pretty cool, actually, if it did. But, well, you know what? I wonder... But see, the problem is, is the MCP panel is not seen by X-Plane. You have to use um, third-party software in order for it to be seen. But, but yeah, okay, that could work. But using the joystick also works for me. All right, we got 37 miles to go. The BBI box supports up to 32 buttons, so even in a fairly complex home cockpit, you rarely need more than one or two of those. Yeah, and yeah, you could run two of them if you needed. I just wish that he had a U.S. distributor. Maybe I'll become the U.S. distributor. Simming is just, it's just simming is just so much more pronounced in Europe. It's, it has to be. And is the reason why simulation is so pronounced in Europe, is it, is it, is it related to the cost of flying in Europe? That's what I want to know. Mr. Chu, hello. So, yeah. You can probably speed up a little bit here. Use my throttle. All right, did we have any steals? No, we didn't. All right, can someone type in exclamation steal right now? You're going to try to steal some snacks from someone. I need to test. You don't know? You don't think so? Hmm. It just seems like there's more simulator enthusiasts in Europe. Maybe it's a um, per capita thing. There we go. St. Wolfric successfully stole 14 snacks. Ooh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, Pat Dog, I'm glad that you're learning some things. I learned things from so so many other people like Toto Ritko here in the chat. <laughs> what was the biggest steal? 97? That was a lot. What does it mean that Ninja with Guitar did not have the required 81 snacks to steal? I don't understand that. What did that mean? Oh, you need to have how many you're going to steal. You need to be able... Okay. That's kind of interesting. Oh, look at that. Serious Gamer tried to steal and he got rejected. Mm. Are you negative? Oh my gosh. Oh. That's funny. All right, let's disable the stealing for now. Stealing is now disabled. <laughs> But since we're in kind of testing mode, I'm going to type in uh, exclamation. I just added 75 snacks to everyone because we're in the beta test mode of the, of the new bot, the Fly John Super Mod. Okay, so what else should we test? Do you guys want to see some anything else? I mean, I'm using the autopilot. You see I can manipulate the heading. Let's manipulate the heading a little bit more so people that tuned in just now. So I'm going to sync up my heading bug. And then now I'm going to go into heading mode. So I'll hit the heading button. Now I'm going to rotate this knob to go east. See, so I'm using the iPad to change the heading in the plane. Uh, ATC just told me to fly 090. So I'm heading, you know, I'm flying 090 now. Oh, and they just said go fly heading 030. Okay, oops. Now I'm going to fly heading 030. You can see there it was a little bit glitchy, but now that I'm, there's 030.
I think head uh, is the coin toss available. <laughs> I guess it could be. Yeah, it's it's available. No, maybe it's not. No, it's disabled right now. Here, I'm going to enable it. All right, coin toss is now enabled. So freeze. Try try uh, exclamation heads seventy five again. All right, now ATC has said fly heading zero one zero. So we're going to fly heading zero one zero. And then oh, ATC just told me my altimeter is two nine nine or two. So I need to rotate my altimeter to two nine or nine or two. <laughs> so we can rotate the altimeter with the iPad as well. <laughs> That's cool. All right. Uh, let's go back into um, nav mode now. So nav mode, and we'll go click on direct to. And we'll activate the direct to Tyson, direct to Knoxville. Oh, freeze! Lost seventy-five snacks. Pat dog lost seventy-five snacks. Ouch. Peter Hoover, right? It's a very nice way. Ninja with guitar loses fifty. It seems like it is rigged. I'm going to try it. Let's see what happens. Oh, the max is 100. Huh. All right. Can I go tails 99? Oh, man. Ouch. I'm going to try it again. Oh, timed out. <sighs> All right, we'll disable the, the snacks. All right, we got 24 miles to go. 23.8. You're one and one. I'm surprised at how many in a row were, were not tails. Is roulette been has roulette been running? Have you guys noticed the roulette being prompted in the chat or no? As soon as someone bets heads it's gonna be tells. But I've disabled it for the time being. All right, well, we've got a successful test. We got 21 miles to the airport. Uh, we're at 3,400. The uh, field elevation at uh, Knoxville is 979. Thanks for your help. Looking into Air Manager and Duet Display now will be awesome when I fly my favorite B-1900. Yeah, absolutely. Enjoy it, and please uh, please report back to me uh, what you find with the 1900 with both scenarios because, yeah, I, I haven't tested the B-1900, but that's one of my favorite planes. So, yeah, Tony. Yeah, the 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 company that uh, that ran the the JFM, they uh, they closed their doors. They shut down. It was uh, yeah, it was like Enron. Exactly. It was really. I was really. I was really not. I was. I was not pleased. But but 
I do think that this new bot has some upside to it, so. And we are gonna give away um, some stuff in the near future for snacks, so. A um, couple of things that we're gonna be giving away. We're gonna be giving away the Super Cub, the AeroSim Dev Group's Super Cub. Uh, I've been beta testing it. If you haven't been able to catch those streams, they're on my YouTube channel. Uh, just look for John Fly and Super Cub, and you will uh, you will find the Super Cub. Yeah, yeah, Tony, right? It sucked. It sucked. Yeah, when, especially when we you know we, we've been doing the the JFM for a good year and a half or more, so. Somewhere on a beach, those John Fly banking fat cats are living large. I know, right? They, they, in fact, we should have a bank heist right now. Yeah, I'm gonna start a bank heist. Let's do it. How do I do it? I forget. Do I type in bank? Oh crap! Wrong keyboard. No, that didn't work. Did I type it wrong? No, you can enter Twitch command. How do you do the bank heist? I forget. Did I spell it wrong? No. No, it's not working. Uh, the levels, yeah, there, um, there's several levels. I haven't renamed them from. Oh, look at that, Bank Heist 100. So maybe you have to do a minimum gamble. How come it didn't work for me? All right, Farmer Medic has started a bank heist. Anyone can get in on it. Type exclamation Bank Heist space and the amount of John Fly miles that you want to risk. So, good luck. All right, we're 13 miles out, so we're going to click on the vertical speed. Boom, and we're going to go down at 400 feet per minute. I'll go ahead and pull back the uh, throttle. As you can see here, the instrumentation is showing a 400 foot per minute descent. And we're going to come down here to 2,000 feet. All right, Pat Dog. Be safe on the, on the transportation home. Let's see, let's see. Iowa Scotsman's in, Pearly G's in, Mr. Chew's in, St. Wolfric and Ninja are all in with Farmer Medic on the bank heist. Can you see the airspace in front of you? Any decent and in, in descent with the autopilot to keep below? Uh, yes, so the Bravo airspace, yeah. The Bravo airspace is right there. Um, what's the shelf of the Bravo? Can you? Can you tell the shelf of the Bravo? Airspace near and ahead. How do you tell the, the shelf what it is? Is there a display option for that? I would think at three thousand or two thousand something we're we're below it, but but then again you if you're coming into this area, you probably have clearance to enter the Bravo. Is it a Bravo or is it a Charlie? It's a Charlie. Yeah, it's a Charlie airspace. All right, check your guns. We are storming the snack municipal bank through all entrance, entrances. <sighs> the crew suffered hu a few losses. The remaining crew got away scoring 373 snacks from the vault. Ah. Okay, GNS doesn't show shelf elevation limits. Okay, well, that's good to know. I'm going to go ahead and hit the alt uh, altitude button. 
We're going to hold our altitude here. Increase. We're 8.7 miles away, so the field is just right up there. So we can see the field right there. We'll go ahead and land on the left. All right, so I'm going to go into heading mode. I'll sync my heading bug. I'm going to go into heading mode. Heading mode is confirmed by the HDG here. I'm then going to scroll the wheel and head over here to the east. I have to go tend to my 11 garages and 54 employees and make a few more deliveries. All right, Tony, thanks for jumping in there. Sorry about the JFM. It really sucks, but good to have you in here. Thanks for joining us tonight. Good luck with all of the work tonight. Epic nobody, I think it's uh, you got a missed uh, you got a typo there. Bravo airspace tends to extend to around 20 miles around the principal field. Yeah, so this is yeah, this is Charlie. I'm slowly uh checking off every Charlie in the lower 48 states. And I've only got just a few left. Um, I run Air Manager on a separate PC and network it to X.11 and run a, my 39 inch onto a 20, 24 inch and then use my desktop aviation switch to change settings. Oh, very nice. I like that. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'm assuming that you're using um, version 2 of Air Manager for the for desktop. I'm really excited for version 3. All right, let's go to open up the bedding for landing rates. I've got uh, the range has changed. There's the new range. The options are, there's only f uh, one, two, three, four, five options. But what's interesting is you either have to type one, three, five, seven, or nine. <laughs> That's funny. So you got and you also have to type in bets, exclamation bets. But there's only one, three, five, seven, and nine. I have no idea why. I'm going to have to fix that. All right, autopilot coming off. We're going to bring back our speed. Should we land on the left or the right? We'll land on the right. So throttle coming all the way back. That'll slow us way down. Use some. Oh! Looking good, Mr. John Fly. Sim dude with the sub crab. By the way, the sub sound is working. Exclamation sub. We got a sub crab on Q. We got a Very sub nice. crab. Very nice. Thank you for the five months, Sim dude. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you for the support. Let, let me rock the invisi sticks we for the. We got a sub crab. First time tonight. All right. I can zoom in here too, because for fun. <laughs> All right, we're down to almost flap speed. Trim it up a little bit here. There's the bets. Now the landing rate is going to be a little different with this view because I don't have I don't have this view coming in to really gauge. So I have to pretend like I know what I'm doing. but we'll see. I'm going to try to get under 99, but I think if I had to guess, I would probably bet five. But All right, there's, we can put in a notch of flaps. We can go full mixture. Another notch of, last notch of flaps. We've got to miss the power lines here. So that's a good thing. Shouldn't fly that actually that low to the power lines, I'm thinking. All right. The bedding is now closed. Five viewers got in for a whopping 100 snacks. Very nice. A little bit slow. Yeah, a little bit slow. It's 
it's kind of a different perspective from us from a stream viewers oh we're now floating a little bit I don't know when to flare because I don't know when my plane is about to touch down so there's gonna be a lot of floating because I don't know when to flare ah 68 <laughs> it's easy at a class Charlie airport to land all right, so we'll bring the throttle back. Iowa Scotsman has started a bank heist. All right, we'll go to the next next area for Boy, that next exit way is far away. We can raise the flaps. Welcome to Knoxville. Another one off the list. Well, two off the list, actually. Type in, can someone test this for me? Type in exclamation Charlie. And it should come up with a link for the list of airports that I have yet to visit. And the ones I have visited. On stream, that is. I kind of like that. You have to say at least one thing every 90 minutes in order to earn snacks. <laughs> All right, kind of a dead airport. We'll just park here for the moment. What's the big change? Uh, these right here are the big change. Oh, the bank heist is happening. All right, so uh, the other thing that you can do besides the 530 is we could drag the 530 off of the iPad screen, and we could bring up the 430, detach the 430, and bring that down here. What happens if we maximize it? kind of goes distorted. So really... iPad's more designed for the uh, the 530. It's kind of cool though. So again, to pop it out, you just come up here into the corner, drag it down to the iPad, and boom, shakalaka. That's kind of cool. Exclamation random. Random works. A few people, oh, 300 snacks were taken from the bank can you handle the GPS on the iPad what do you mean handle yeah we just did a full flight where we had everything so I can hit direct and I can just come up here and I can say okay I want to go to K A D C Wadena don't know where that is 814 miles away um, I can go down here and I can hit procedures. I can do vertical navigation. I can change the CDI. I can go to flight plan and I can go menu. Oh, snack. I can hit uh, menu and then I can scroll down here and say delete flight plan and hit enter. You can't handle the GPS. <laughs> yep. It's pretty cool. All right, so I was going to I was going to do the uh take a look here again and see what we have for options. All right, so we got the Beechcraft. Um so if we go to Beechcraft, you know, it's going to show the panel um for, or sorry, the Baron 58. So you could each one of these individual um, 
panels, you could take some away and you could leave some. Uh, I'm thinking that an iPad Pro, like the 12, almost 13 inch iPad Pro would be pretty cool <laughs> to run this. I probably wouldn't run everything on here, um, but I would run, you know, the six pack obviously. Um, oh, I can control, I have the, I have the SciTech radio panel, so I don't need the, um, let's just go over here to blank. Um, well, I'll do another blank and, uh, we'll come down here and we'll say, um, radio, radio, uh, take away the keyboard. Uh, this Bendix radio stack, that would work. Um, wait, there's probably already a Com Nav stack. There we go. Com Nav stack. So now I'll hide the menu. Okay, so now here I have control over the navs. And there you can see the autopilot, etc. So I envision an iPad by itself using this. So if we, go back to the, well, let's just do it here. I'll just test this. So if I rotate that dial to one, how do I do the outer knob? 109, so there's 109.15, switch that to primary. Now let's go back into the sim and see if it um, changed COM, well, let's do COM1 here. So let's go to 121.67, we'll change that. And then back in the sim, you can see here, you can see here that it did change it to 121.67. And obviously we can zoom in here and you can see that those changes that I made are relative in the sim. So you could have that radio stack available to you, which would be kind of kind of nice. Um, and of course you can change your transponder just by, you know, I, I'm just I'm just scrolling in circles on the screen. So I two 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 four you know, so you could do that all without a mouse. And then you could squawk altitude. And then, of course, you have your autopilot panel. So that's kind of cool. Um, so the other things we got, we got a Cessna 152 stack. So you could fly your 152 with your on your iPad showing with that. That's kind of handy. Um, seems like there was another one in here that was like a King Air. If I go plus, oh okay, yeah, there's an Epic E1000, Baron, an Airbus helicopter, a Robinson R22, Robinson R22, a Cessna 402. That'd be kind of cool. So there's a Cessna 402 panel that we could have on the iPad that would interface with X Plane. You bought an iPad from one of the high school students just for Air Manager. I run a radio stack and an autopilot. Nice. Well, I'm glad you discovered it. I did not discover it until just recently. If I go plus, come over here. Uh, oh, Piper. P there we go. There's the Cub. Hide the menu. So there you go. You got the Cub stack. I like that. But of course, we're just testing the 172 today. It's really handy. So a couple other bits of news. Um, the... Uh, Icarus released the Avanti 2, version 2.0. So this is the official checklist for the Avanti. So I want to 
I want to load that up and learn that plane and I'll stream it. I'm not sure if I'll stream it before I learn it, but I'm excited about that. So check it out. Go out there and play around with it and let me know what you think because uh, then you can teach me. I'm going to go over to my Charlie list. So some of you guys typed in exclamation Charlie and you got a link to my list of Charlie airports. I gotta go to my own link. All right, so there we go. So there's my list of Charlie airports and Bravo airports that we've visited on stream. So we're gonna come down here, we're gonna go to Charleston, and we're going to say that that's been visited. So we'll mark that as green. And that was visited on October, what's the date today? The 4th, October 4th. The other one that we visited was McGee Tyson. So we'll mark that as visited on the John Fly stream, October 4th. And yeah, so we only have Greenville, Spartanburg, Myrtle Beach, Chattanooga. No, we just visited Chattanooga. We didn't go to Charleston. Sorry, I gotta undo that. Reset. Sorry. Cut. And we gotta go to CHS or CHA and paste that. Okay, and then change that to green. There we go. We haven't. We're. Yeah, we went from CHA to, to TYS. Yeah, so we still have to do CHS, GSP, Myrtle Beach, Norfolk, Roanoke, Jaeger, and Charleston. There's two Charlestons. And um, General Mitchell in Milwaukee and Dane County in Wisconsin. You can't figure out how to use the autopilot? Uh-oh, I hope it uh, works for me. So yeah, we've only got a few less and we'll, <laughs> we could probably start over, but I'll be able to say that I visited every every Bravo and Charlie in the lower 48, uh, accepting military fields that were military uh, only. <laughs> 